God is my all my all my all I need you to get to that place to where he's your all it's, it's, it's a journey to get there it's a journey to get to that place where he's your all because many times we we leave so much to the side because we feel like God doesn't want to deal with that. But whatever that is, come on, turn to your neighbor, tell him whatever that is, give it to God. Come on, whatever that thing, that thing, that, yes, that thing you're thinking about right now, that hang up, come on that weight that makes you sit down when your hands should be raised because you don't feel worthy you don't feel like God is hearing you that thing that's what I'm talking about oh, you got to break somebody say break out you got to break out and the only way I know how to break out is with a breakout praise. Because see, this is the thing about praising God. When you praise God, you don't think about nothing else but praising God. No, I'm talking about when you really praise God. When you really praise God, all those sins, all those weights, all those cares, just for that moment. Come on, mother, you know what I'm talking about. Come on, I'm talking about when you're going through something and you just have a breakout praise? Come on, how many know what I'm talking about? Come on, all those things, all those difficulties for that moment, somebody say that moment. But you have control over how long that moment will last. Hallelujah. Come on, you got to learn how to praise God. You got to learn how to praise God. The more you praise him, the more these things fall off of you. Hallelujah. Amen. People will look at you and say, how? How can you praise God? How can you? How can you celebrate God at a time like this? Hallelujah. But you tell him when you got the mind of Christ. And you know that everything is going to work out in your favor. Hallelujah. No matter what you're going through. Hallelujah. Even when I'm sick in my body, he keeps me. As I go through, he's with me. He doesn't abandon me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, he did not say difficult times would not come. Hallelujah. He didn't say that. But he said, I'll keep you. I'll keep you. When you think about me, I'll keep you. Tell somebody, when you're going through, think about Jesus. Come on, when you're having a difficult moment, think about Jesus. You know, when the devil tries to tempt me with different things in my life, I think about Jesus. I do the exact opposite. I'll get my Bible. Come on, I'll grab something holy. Come on, somebody. I'll grab a scripture. Come on now. I may not even know where it's found, but I'll, I'll read anything. Because how many know when you read the word of God, the devil will get on the run? Hallelujah. Hey Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's not act like we don't have trials and temptations. Thank you, Lord God. Don't do what the enemy wants you to do. Do the opposite. When he wants you to cry and be sad, celebrate God that you're still here. Come on, and that you're in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord God. Can y'all 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 can discontinue that the heat there for me? I know 
if y'all cold, put your coats on, but I'm hot. Amen. But listen, I mean, you, 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 you got to learn. I, I, I'm telling you all, it works. It works. It works. Uh, for some reason, I'm just recalling the time that, you know, loved ones have gone on and I was able to just shout anyway. Yeah, I, I've had times when people would come up to me and ask me, how can you do that? Because I know God. I know the Lord. And I know that he will make a way. Come on, somebody say somehow. Somehow he'll make a way. He will make a way for you and for me. And he'll see you through it. Hallelujah. But saints of God, we got to get again, as we said on last week, you got to get powered up. Come on, somebody say, I got to get powered up. Amen. We're walking around with so much low Jesus energy. Hello, somebody. We got energy for everything else but Jesus. Amen. You got to get powered up. Some of y'all need to have a stun gun put on your, oh, watch your mouth. You need a stun gun. You need something to give you. Come on. You need a jolt of the Holy Ghost. Who was it? Jeremiah said it's like what? Come on. Somebody says it's like fire. Come on. Shut up in my hey fire. Shut up in my bones. It'll make you move when you don't feel like moving. It'll make you get up when you feel like laying down. I'm talking about Jesus here today. Hallelujah. Fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord God. And it's because you are an overcomer. Hallelujah. You have over. Somebody say, I've already overcome. See, the thing is, is that you got to understand that things are done outside of time. Because how many know God does not live in time? I said God does not live in time. He lives in eternity, right? There is no time frame. So you got to understand that things are prepared outside of time. Hallelujah. So when you're in Christ Jesus, you've already overcome. When you're saved, come on, when you have the Lord on the inside of you, tell us, I've already, it's already done. We have a hard time realizing that sometimes. Amen. Because we're in time and we're waiting for that thing to manifest itself. That's why the Bible tells us that we can speak those things as though they were, right? Because those things, it, God has already prepared those things and we're just waiting for it to manifest itself in our time. We've already overcome. You've already beat that addiction. Come on, somebody. Can you celebrate with me? No, 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 no. Celebrate like it was your issue. You've already beat that addiction. Your heart has already been mended from that broken heart. That disappointment is melting away. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Preparations for your finances have already been done. Somebody shout, it'll be there when I get there. It'll be there when I get there. Whatever I need. When I get there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Let me see if I can find the mic that'll stay on. Hallelujah. Give me number four. Hallelujah. There we go. Hallelujah. We've already overcome, y'all. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4. 
Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. In, over, in order to realize that you've overcome, first of all, you got to know that you're in God, right? Our job today is to get you saved. Come on, it's to get you saved. It's to get you to the point to where you can grab on and hold on to the promises of God. That's what it is, y'all. And the enemy keeps trying to confuse you and make you feel less than. And God has already made a way for you to overcome every obstacle in your life. Everything that you're fighting about. Hallelujah. 1 John 4. I, I, I wanted to go down, but we, we just might as well just read it. I, 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 we might as well just read starting from verse 1. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Father God, we ask you right now to prepare our hearts, prepare our ears, prepare our minds to hear, receive, understand what the Holy Ghost has to say to us today. Father, I believe that you're going to give us a word of deliverance right now that cannot be denied it's going to be so good that we ain't going to want to leave it behind but we're going to grab onto it and we're going to take it the rest of the way in Jesus name Holy Ghost work on us in Jesus name we pray it says in verse 1 it says beloved first of all somebody right there just say he's definitely talking to me <laughs> when he said beloved <laughs> oh you gotta know God is talking to you don't leave yourself out of this scripture okay do not leave yourself out of this scripture beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirit whether they are of God because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that, confess, that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Every, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in flesh in the flesh is not of God and this is that spirit of the Antichrist hallelujah this is that spirit of the Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world Somebody say, it's here right now. People are looking for a person. People are looking for a thing. But this Antichrist is a spirit. Hello, somebody? This Antichrist, this thing. And what is Antichrist? Everything that, Antichrist means against Christ. Hello, somebody? It means against Christ. So any spirit that's against the things of God. It's an antichrist. And false prophets will come and tell you things that are not of God. And the Bible is telling us to run away from those things. And the only way you will know whether it's of God is according to the spirit that you have in you. Hello, somebody. How can you try the spirit by the spirit when you have no spirit? You need the spirit of God. You need the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Because the Holy Ghost will tell you you can do it. And the Antichrist spirit will tell you you can't do it. The spirit of God will tell you you're healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> and the Antichrist will tell you no you ain't. You heard what the doctor said. 
This Holy Ghost will tell you you can overcome this addiction. You can overcome these things that so easily. Come on now. The Antichrist will tell you you can't. God don't care about you. Or better yet, he'll tell you, oh, don't worry about that. You all right. Come on, somebody. Don't let the Antichrist get you comfortable in your sin. See, people are looking for this Antichrist to come in a way, you know, when we look in the book of Revelation, you know, how, you know, all the calling the fire down and all these things. And, but you got to understand the Antichrist is in works right now. Hello, somebody. The Antichrist is trying to keep you from knowing Christ as your savior, as your deliverer, and as your Lord. Hello, somebody. But you got to know when you have Jesus Christ on the inside of you, you can celebrate. Because the Bible says in verse 4, it says, ye are of God. Say, no, somebody just called my name. Come on, somebody, somebody holler, he just called my name. Ye are of God, little children. And have what? Tell somebody I've overcome. It's already done. All I got to do is stand in my grace. Stand in the favor that God has given me. Ye have overcome them spirits. Because what? Greater. Somebody say greater. Hallelujah. See, this is, this is what the devil tries to do. When we say Christ and antichrist it sounds like they're opposite sounds like there can be a little tussle there but tell somebody there's no fight there's no competition because greater is here come on somebody shout greater is here so you have to understand that this is not a fair fight when you are powered up by the Holy Ghost it is not a fair fight because what you're working with is greater come on somebody say greater what you're working with is greater it says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world as I said only way to try the spirit is by the spirit that's in you so if you want to overcome you got to accept the spirit of God hello somebody so that you can be so that you can make this scripture the truth in your life It's up to you whether the scripture is talking about you or not. Tell somebody that's your decision. The Bible is right. I don't care who. I don't, the Bible is right. The Bible is right. The Bible does not lie. But it's up to you, come on, to accept it and to live it. Come on, quickly, let's read through the rest. It says here, they are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. Ah, that's so true. We know what's being spoken today. It says we are of God. Now see, it, it depends on, are you, are you verse 5 or 6? Hello somebody. I said are you verse 5? Don't answer. Don't answer if you're verse 5. Are you verse 6? Oh, somebody ought to say, yeah. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth. I told you the Bible is right. 
and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. See, this is what it gets to. It's about, somebody says it's about love. Beloved, let us love one another. For the love of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Tell somebody, that's, that, that's, that's almost one of your first evidence that God is in you and that you're in God is the love of God that is in you. It says, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Come on, look at somebody, say, do you have evidence? I'm talking about the love. The love of God. The love of God. The love of God has to be in us. Not just around us, but in us. This is the evidence. This is how, this is how God shows himself to others. It's through the love of God. It says here in verse 9, it says, In this was manifested the love of God towards us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Not live by him, but live through him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. See, the thing is, is that a lot of times, a lot of times we get caught up because we try to live by him. When you live by him, you might be trying to follow some laws and you might be trying to live your life not to sin. Come on, how many's done that? I, I, I raise my hand for you. I've lived my life. I try not to sin and I always fail. Hello, somebody. Oh, Jesus. Somebody just sit on your hands today. Hallelujah. When I try to live by him, amen, those struggles, they overcome me from time to time. And not only do those struggles overcome me from time to time, but the devil will get me in such a guilty place. Hey, glory to your name, God. He will get me in such a guilty place that I will stay away from my place of deliverance I will stay away from the place of my provision because of the guilt that the devil puts on me. Tell somebody, you got to break out of that place. You got to understand, amen, that these things that God has promised us, like provision, like the blessings of God, these are places that we got to get to these are not just things we talk about Jehovah Jireh right my provider but you got to understand that when Abraham come on because he was uh, uh, about to kill his son right this is where it comes from right he put he made the altar he, in Genesis, he, he made the altar, he put his son on the altar, and he took the knife, and he was about to thrust the knife into his son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Now, many of us, we think, as, we think of uh, his son, Isaac, as a, as a little boy. He wasn't no little boy. He was a man. He was a man. They say that he was maybe somewhere around 30 years old or so. So he was big and bad enough at least maybe not to beat his father, but at least to give him a good chase. But he couldn't give him a good chase because you got to understand that Isaac was a type of Jesus. And the Bible tells us that Jesus laid down his life. 
Nobody had to chase after Jesus. We just got finished. God gave his what? Only be, he gave him to us. Hallelujah. So when we talk about Jehovah Jireh, amen, the angel told Abraham to stop. Don't put your hands on the lad. He told him, don't kill your son. See, Abraham had all confidence because he knew that his son had purpose. So first of all, you got to know that before you go through what you go through, you got purpose. Somebody say, I got a purpose. So if it happens to me, it got to work out. <laughs> because God got a greater plan for my life. It has to work out. It's got to work out. It's got to work out for my good. That's what the Bible says. All things work together for my good because I love God and I am the call. Somebody say, I've been called, baby. I'm the called according to his purpose. So he knew that Isaac was the chosen child. Even after he had messed up and tried to help God out with Ishmael. Come on, y'all. Be careful trying to help God out. I heard a word. It said that's where the Ishmaels are born when you try to help God out. But you got to understand when he told him, don't put your hands on the land. And he stopped him from doing that. And the Bible says that he looked over and he saw a ram in the thickets. Now, I want you to understand that that ram did not just come because God said abracadabra. Hello, somebody. It, the ram did not appear. Tell somebody the ram was always there. The provision was always there. It's just that Abraham and Isaac could not see it. Come on, somebody, because you can't see the blessings of God until you get into the things of God. Until you start walking according to the word of God, you ain't going to see the hand of God. Some of y'all, you, you complaining because you say, I don't see God no more because you ain't where you need to be. Tell somebody, you got to get to the place of your provision. You got to get to the place of your deliverance. The Bible says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. But he can't, listen, if you decide to get out the car, he's still in the car. He, he's still with you. But a lot of us, we, we, we don't think of provision as being a place. But when Abraham saw the ram in the bush, he got the ram and began to sacrifice and he called the place he said I call this place Jehovah Jireh God will provide so here it's about tell somebody it's about the place and a lot of us we don't think that the place is important it's important where you go it's important where you go to church don't let nobody Listen, I said this before. Don't let nobody dissuade you from leaving your place of provision. If God has you here, no one else's come on opinion about nothing should cause you to leave your place of blessing, your place of healing, your place of miracle. Come on, tell somebody it's a place. So don't, don't, for all, everybody that think that they can just stay home without reason. I'm going to say it again, without reason. Be, oh, you know, COVID happened. People ain't comfortable. You comfortable at every Jay-Z concert. You comfortable at every football, basketball game. Come on, high school football. Oh, I got to take my son to high school. Uh, you comfortable everywhere else, but you ain't comfortable at where you, you go to work every day. Some of your doctors and nurses, you around sick people all day, but you can't come to the house of God. Something is wrong. 
and you're wondering why you're struggling in life, tell somebody you ain't in the right place. You got to get in the place of provision to where you can become powered up. Somebody shout powered up. I told you last week when there's two or three gathered in his name, he is there in the midst of them. So you're wondering why you got no power to prosper. Why you got no power to break these chains. Why you got no power to, to, to break away from the ways that you're feeling. It's because you haven't been powered up. You haven't gotten to the place of your provision. It says here that in verse 9 again it talks about being manifested. It says, and this was manifest. Tell somebody, manifest yourself to be God. That means this is where it's shown. This is where it's shown. This is where God shows up. Those things that were created in outside of time are now coming into my, they're walking into my destiny. They're walking into my destiny. It says here in verse 12, it says, no man has seen God any at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in, somebody say in him. Not by him, but in him. Thank you, Lord God. And he in us. Because he has done what? Given us. Given what? A spirit? Come on, somebody. I don't just want a spirit. Hello, that's the problem. A lot of us were walking around with spirits. Tell somebody you need his spirit. Hallelujah. His spirit will be in you. Thank you, Lord God. It says here, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent his Son. Can you testify about that? To be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess, this is it, y'all. This is your breakthrough moment. Somebody shout, this is breakthrough right here. Come on, if you're bound up, come on, if you got issues right now that you can't seem to break away from, come on, all y'all that's online, this is for you. It says here, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth by him, Come on, somebody. In him and he in God. Tell somebody you got to confess this thing. It says, and we have known and believed the love that God had towards us, to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. Hallelujah. You got, to, you got to let God in you and you got to be in God. Hallelujah. This ain't just one way. We say, Lord, come into my heart. The, 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 the traditional is uh, 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 and make my heart your abiding place. Y'all remember that one? We want God to come in us and we think it's over right there. Tell somebody, it ain't over. You, you got to get in God. Hello, somebody. Tell, tell your neighbor. Tell, look at somebody and say, you got to get in God. How do we get in God? You get in his word. Hello, somebody. You got to get in the word of God and allow the word of God to deliver you and bring you out of those places and take you to the places that you need to be. Herein is our Love made perfect. My God. 
It's getting to that place, letting God in you and you getting in God allows your love to become perfect. Because now you're doing things through God. When, you're, when God is in you and you're in God, then you live through God. Those people that you could not forgive, through God you can. Come on, those things that you couldn't seem to break away from, through God, somebody say, through God, I can. All those difficult situations, through God, I can. Because I've been powered up. Hallelujah. It says here, our love was made perfect that, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world now here I mean we can assume that he's talking about the last days when we talk about judgment but I want to tell you something each and every one of us goes through a judgment every day because the devil is an accuser of the brethren and every day he wants to judge you to see come on how you gonna fight him back every day every day there's a challenge that the enemy puts his little nasty demons on you because how many know the devil is not omnipresent come on you can't find it in the word of God the devil ain't everywhere at the same time. We give the devil too much credit. The devil ain't thinking about you. He done put his little demons on you. Hallelujah. To come and to, as Paul said, buffet you. They can't stop you. You can only stop yourself. But that depends on the spirit that you have in you. What are you listening to? The Bible tells me, amen, it says, if you're of the world, then you hear the things of the world. But when you're in God, you hear, we just read it. When you're in God, you hear the things of, so what are you listening to? How are you bending your ear? What's influencing your life? Thank you, Lord God. It says here, because as, I'm in verse 17, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Come on, we love this scripture. But perfect love casts out all fear. Now, listen, y'all, if we, if we depending on our love, we're going to fail. But it's the love of God towards us that should cast out all of your fears because you know he cares for you. Hallelujah. Cast out all fears because fear has torment. It will torment you. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. He's telling you got a ways to go. Tell somebody we may have a ways to go. We got to get, I told you, it's a place. You got to get to that place of provision. You got to get to that place where you know God abides. We love him. Oh, we say this all the time, but we don't know it's really in there. We love him because what? He first, he first loved us. And then this is your test. If any man say I love God and hate his brother, my God, my God, my God. He's a liar. Woo I gotta pick up my feet so nobody step on my feet. If any man say I love God and hate his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen. There's another verse that, that you see every day. How can he love God who he has not seen? And this commandment we have. This commandment have we from him. That he 
who loveth God love his brother also. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you, Lord God. I just want to read one more passage of scripture, then I'm done. John chapter 15, verse 5. We're talking about living in God. Well, just really quick. We're going to start at 1. We're going to go down about 5. I'm going to read it really quickly. I ain't going to even try to explain it because it's self-explainable. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch, somebody say in, in me, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Oh, I want to explain, but I already told you I'm not. Now ye are clean. Somebody say through. Ah, real quick. Somebody say I'm clean through Christ. Come on, somebody got to really know that today. Hallelujah. I got to stop right there for a minute. Come on, Holy Ghost. Somebody say I'm clean through Christ. The devil wants to make you feel dirty. Somebody say I'm clean through Christ give me a clean heart oh God and renew a right spirit renew a right spirit within me do you have the spirit of God today now are ye clean through the word which I have spoken unto you abide in me I need y'all to help me out today. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in. I told you you gotta be in God. Tell somebody you gotta be in God. Come on, tell somebody you got to be in God. I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, come on, help a brother out. Without me, so all y'all, all, 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 all y'all sitting here trying to trying to do all kind of stuff. He said, I can do it, just, uh, Pastor, I, I can do it, just give me a couple more weeks. I, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get over this thing. Don't worry. Just have, please be patient with me. We ain't got time for that. Because I can't be patient with ignorance. Come on, somebody. Especially devilish ignorance. Because devilish ignorance will cause you to miss the move of God. Come on, somebody. You you already know the word. Don't be ignorant of what you already know. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. You know that Jesus is the only way out. Thank you, Lord God. Ye without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is a cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my word, I told you, how do you get in God? Come on again. I need everybody to say it at the same time. How do we get in God? If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask. Come on, this is how you get delivered. See, we, 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 we want to say, you know, the Bible says we can ask anything in his name and he will do it. Well, you missed the first part, baby. Hello, somebody. Don't come up here. That's a counterfeit thought. That's fake. That ain't real. Because when you're in God, you're going to know the will of God. You're going to know how to pray. You're going to know what to pray for and what not to pray for. And when God don't answer your prayer, because he knows what's best, you're going to still be able to give him thanks. Come on, I know what I'm talking about. 
I know, I know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Because there's some prayers that you don't need to be answered. And God knows. Come on, somebody. He knows what to answer. He knows when, how, and what. And that's called perfect love. That's called perfect love. That's called trusting God to know what's good for you. He's already made provision outside of time. He knows what's coming. He knows your ending from your beginning. Tell somebody, trust God. Learn how to trust him. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. What ye will. What ye will. Come on, let's go to the script. Not my. Come on, what did Jesus say? Not my will, but let your will be done. Is that your prayer today? Not my will, Lord. But let you, he said, come on now. Y'all got to tie this together. Ask what ye will. He didn't say ask whatever you want. He said ask what ye will. And we know that what goes along with that. Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. Let your purpose be done in my life. Hallelujah. God is not our candy store. Hallelujah. And that's the problem. We come in from week to week and we just want to get a good sugar high. Hallelujah. But when you get too much sugar, you get diabetes. <laughs> come on, we got to move on. You will get spiritually sick. Oh, we got to say this. I'm, I'm done. You will get spiritually sick. If you're coming in here for a weekend high. Hello, somebody. If you're coming in here for a little shot of Jesus, y'all say, yeah, but that's good. That's supposed to keep me for the week. That ain't in God. You ain't in God. Come on, you ain't in God. You got to get into this word. You got to see what the word says about you so that when the devil comes to accuse you, and we say the devil is a liar. But he ain't lying about you. Living your life makes the devil a liar. Living your life in Christ. My God, I got to stop. Living your life in, I got, listen, living your life in Christ makes the devil a liar. Come on, stand to your feet, then I'll stop. Oh, yeah, y'all getting up now. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord some praise in this house. Come on, that means to open up your mouth. Thank you, Lord God. Open up, open up. Thank you, Lord God. Father, we want to be in you while you're in us. We want to live in you. The word says it's in you that we live and have our very being. It's in you, God. Help us to realize that, that without you we can do nothing. But we have the scripture that says with you we can do what? Through? That does what? You are my strength. Your strength like no other. Your strength like no other. And it reaches to me. Come on. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Your strength like no other. And it reaches to me. Come on, in the fullness, every in the fullness of your grace. Come on, in the power of your, you lift me. Yeah. Come on, in the fullness, in the fullness of your 
Come on. Yeah. In the power. Go ahead, Lemay. Come on. You lift me up. Yeah. Oh, in the fullness. In the fullness of your. Come on. In the. Come on. Come on. Somebody say, lift me, Lord. Come on, lift your hands to Jesus. Lift me out of my situation. Oh, you are, you are my strength. Come on, put your hands together. Strength like Noah. Come on, there's nobody like him. And he reaches. Come on, you're my hope. Come on, you are my Come on, right in Citadel of Hope Mission. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, you got to put your hope in God. Come on, one more time. You are my hope. You are my hope like none other. Come on, I can't trust anybody but God. Come on, and it reaches. In the fullness, in the power of your name. Come on, how many know there's power in the name of Jesus? Hey, lift me up. Come on, last time in the fullness. Yeah. no other strength like no other reaches to me now reach out and grab it come on it says it's reaching to you now reach back come on reach out for the strength reach out for the hope reach out for the joy reach out for the love reach out for the spirit Reach out, reach out, reach out. Come on, we used to sing the song to reach out and be made whole. The Son of God is passing by, waiting just to hear you cry, waiting just to hear your cry. Now reach out and be made whole whole come on lift your hands where you are father God we come to you right now and we speak wholeness over these people in the name of Jesus those that are in the building though that may be listening on online today we speak wholeness from the inside out God, I'm not talking to, today, God, I'm not talking about just our physicalness, but I'm talking spiritual wholeness that will bring us in line with your word, that will bring us in line with the purpose that you have for us over our lives. God, you know what we need. Some God, we sometimes, God, we just bore you with just asking for things we think we need. But the Bible says that you already know what we have need of before we even ask. God, we ask you to any way you choose to bless us. <laughs> Come on, anybody want to agree with that? Any way you choose to bless me, I'm going to be satisfied. Whatever way you choose to move, God, move, change rearrange make me mold me shape me after your will God in the name of Jesus Christ